Yo, what up? Stan, back with another video. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous video, I'm gonna mention it again, but this is about my 2002 Silverado. You can probably hear it in the background. This is about my 2002 Silverado. If you want to know more about this particular build, if this is your first time on the channel, go to my previous video. I've probably linked it already up top. Drop a comment in that comment section about what you want to know about this truck, about this build. I also have this 2017 1LE. That's another build of mine. But if you want to know about the truck, drop a comment on that video. This video isn't it the one. I mean, honestly, let's be honest, I'll still make a video about it if it's good enough, but I want to see comments in that other video section. But let's go check out the truck. All right, so like I said, this video is about this 2002 Silverado 1500 5.3. If you don't know, if you're new to this channel, I have this six liter um, sitting on this engine stand here. They're all tied up. 5.3 spare motor if I ever need it for anything sitting right here. Funny thing is, I got an LS1 crank sitting in the back of this truck. So I got LS's, I'm ready. Uh, the six liter's going in this truck. But this is it, it's very dirty. Very, very dirty. Texas Speed Custom Cam. If you want to know about the cam, about this build that I have in this current setup, uh, link will be somewhere up top. Uh, video will slide by information about that. So that's going to be that. But this isn't what this video is about. So let me turn this thing off so I can actually speak at a normal tone. And then I'll tell you about the video. LS1 crank chilling. Uh, it's probably gonna have to go inside pretty soon. All right. Everyone knows that key chime gets annoying. So hopefully this video will be good. I've waited a few days to make this particular video, mainly because I've had some technical difficulties with the truck. Uh, not the major, but had to get it worked out what we got just before I, I got to do some due diligence real quick check on some things before we jump into this video but it looks to be all right anyways boom 2002 Silverado 5.3 LM7 uh, Texas Speed ported heads uh, Texas Speed custom camp but like I said I wanted to make a video about this right here i always get questions stan what did you do to make that intake work how do i get that intake what intake did you use this that and the third like i said i want to answer you guys' questions so if you have questions send them to me drop them in that previous video drop them in the comments there's a lot going on in this engine compartment true so i want to give you answers to what you want to know first things first i'm going to start with the intake itself um it is a all right a lot of you guys may or may not know summit is a big distributor for a lot of brands holly is another distributor for a lot of brands a lot of people don't know holly owns a lot of these companies these older companies that were about to go out of business holly bought them up uh, summit is probably the largest distributor for holly uh, summit what they do not just for holly products but holly but a lot of other ones, but what they do is they'll take your product, they'll ask you to build it. So basically you gotta think about this from a company standpoint. Uh, if I can make a thousand intakes for the same price as what I make them and sell them in bulk to Summit for, I mean, you're not gonna sell them for list price, but if they're gone and you're still making money, it's a great idea. So what Summit did was, this is a Holly Sniper holly efi sniper intake it's not the high ram the ones that in the trucks will fit under here and it's not a ls xr or anything like that like a uh what's who makes that not msd but it's not even an msd this is a true holly sniper i'm not blowing smoke or anything like that when i bought this i used to work at attitude street cars attitude street cars we were building a chevelle we got the holly sniper intake and we bought my intake um 
they're literally identical. The boxes are identical. The instructions are identical. Only difference is the box doesn't say Holly Sniper. The instructions don't say Holly Sniper. The top of this manifold, it should say Holly Sniper right here. It doesn't. That's literally the only difference. The hardware is the same, everything. So this is a Holly Sniper intake. One thing I will tell you, and we'll dive in, is I have, as you can see, Holly Sniper EFI fuel rails on this truck. So, like I said, this is really a Holly product. These fuel rails went right on to this truck, to this manifold, with no questions asked. So, two things, Holly Sniper intake, Holly Sniper fuel rails. Uh, the truck fuel rails will not work, uh, so you will have to build your fuel system. Part of my fuel system, I have this air motive uh, fuel regulator. This is the uh, feed line. The return line is down at the bottom of the regulator. This is coming out of the feed, going in to basically the far side of the intake over here is where the fuel goes in. Uh, we got vacuum via the intake and that's really it so those are the three uh, components um, so this is the stock fuel line here summit has a an adapter where it goes to gm fuel line uh connection to an i want to say this is six an and then you just run the rest uh, i use the summit uh push lock uh, an fittings and hoses like i said the fuel, well, here it is. I forgot. The fuel comes from over there in the regulator. Mine comes around the intake and it goes in here on this 180. So feed, feed is here, 180. We're traveling down the fuel line, well, down the fuel rails. Injectors here. There's a crossover, that little silver right there is a crossover where it crosses over and it's gonna feed into the back of that fuel rail here but you have to deadhead if you're gonna keep if you're gonna keep this alternator on the stock truck accessory drive there is literally no way where you can run a straight return line that's why you have to use a regulator you have to deadhead it here one because even this 180, this 180 will not make this turn. It'll hit the back of the alternator. Um, it just it just doesn't work. Uh, unless there's a smaller 180, maybe you can make it work. But really, it doesn't make that big of a difference. I know some people are going to say, like, it's still feeding back to the truck. Um, it works fine. I haven't had any issues, especially with fuel, so we're good. Um, another thing I will mention is my main wiring harness is sliding in between the alternator and the fuel rail dang that fuel rail is cold um the harness goes underneath underneath come on it goes underneath uh the manifold really this harness lays where it's supposed to on the truck manifold the harness goes on top on this manifold we're putting it underneath so all my harness lines, all my injector lines and everything, you kind of got to, it takes some time to get this set up to work. You got to get everything kind of situated, get your lines laid out, uh, this intake. Another thing to note is install your fuel rails and injectors before you put the intake on top of the engine. Um, I've done it both ways. It's way easier just putting it on factory. Well, not factory, but from the beginning, and then just putting it all on at once. Um, where do, where do we need to go now? So, like I say, your injector lines and everything they come up from underneath. That's what the main main wiring harness does. Uh, what do we got? Um, so, the sensors that go on the top of the intake manifold, the truck intake manifold. You got not mass airflow. That's the evap sensor. The EVAP sensor, let me see if I can get you a good shot of it. Here it is. The EVAP sensor here is, it works, but it doesn't work. It's plugged in. It's got vacuum um, for what it needs to do, but we turned it off. Um, hopefully no one who knows me knows that I don't have my EVAP on, but you don't really need it. 
the truck passes the missions perfectly fine. Uh, so that's why I mentioned that because I have to do emissions and I hope I didn't get some, get myself in trouble. Anyways, Eve out there, um, there is, there's a couple more things that I kind of got eliminated. Like I said, all your, your brake booster vacuum, all the bungs are underneath the manifold. Um, also put those bad boys on before you put the man, manifold on. So put all your, you got to use a big bung for the brake booster. Uh, they give you an assortment of them. You only need one big one, the two medium one, and there's one small one. The small one is for the fuel. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, what else? Throttle body. Whew. Now, this is where this intake has given me some trouble. So, I had a, a, a Holly 97 millimeter, 98 millimeter throttle body. Did not work did not work it's just a long you can probably hear it in, in the dyno video of this truck uh there's like a weird whistling uh that is the throttle body could not figure out why don't know why don't even care uh especially on this truck i will tell you too all the trucks all the guys that i follow with big thousand horsepower truck builds they still run this throttle body basically ls1 throttle body which is about the same i think it's the LS1's the same size. Um, so, LS2 throttle bodies. Basically, a lot of the guys like to run the drive-by the drive by cable, not the drive-by wire. I'm a drive-by cable type of guy, too. So, I think that's the best. So, this throttle body, really, if the throttle body is your choke point, you got bigger issues. I know a bigger throttle body is going to help you cut down on the restriction. But, I know some people say just pick, put a bigger blower on it. Put a bigger turbo on it. It'll go through um, like I said, all big horsepower bills that I know of, I've checked them out. They still use this throttle body. Um, so this is stock throttle body. We have a ITC, a billet, LS, a three bolt, because you got to know this throttle body is a three bolt throttle body to full bo four bolt adapter. Because this uh, flange on the back side of the, or the front side of the intake is four bolt pattern. The sniper throttle body you don't have to use that i will know one thing even with the sniper if your truck is a drive-by cable like how mine is now, mine isn't drive-by wire you don't see any of that stuff here you still have to use this holly throttle body cable bracket so this is a bracket that obviously allows the cables my cruise control still works so it allows your throttle body uh cable your throttle cable and your cruise control cable to mount to this intake because obviously on the truck intakes it mounts on top like right up here obviously there's no place for that um you can't really run it underneath so it kind of messes up the clean look of it but i really don't care it's still a good setup i like the way it looks anyway um so you have to have this bracket um but like i said if i've seen this throttle body i actually on the chevelle i helped build we use the same setup and we used the aftermarket throttle body and it worked uh and I've heard people say, oh, I used a sniper and it didn't give me problems. I don't know if it was just the one I got. I don't really care. Don't need it. <laughs> Trucks run, runs perfectly fine. Like I said, this is the ITC billet three bolt to four bolt adapter. So this throttle body, uh, it gets kind of cumbersome. Make sure you seal all this up real good right here. If you don't seal it up, you're going to have vacuum leaks. Also as well, watch this bracket here. This bracket there's a big weld that kind of holds this kind of bent part and it'll hit on the top of the flange. Kind of like how on this corner, you can't see it, but on the other corner, it'll hit on the top of the flange. Um, on mine, let me see if I can get you guys a shot of it. Right there in the top corner, I actually shaved down the flange of the throttle body a little bit. Or not the throttle body, of the manifold. Because the, the weld is right there so basically, I got a little ziz wheel, trimmed the manifold down. Didn't want to cut the wheel because I didn't want to take the strength out of it, even though it's really not holding anything. And now it works perfectly fine, no vacuum leaks. I will tell you guys, I RTV the heck out of this. They give you these little paper gaskets that I did put on there, but I just RTV'd it as well. Um, all your stock sensors work perfectly fine, so that's good to go. Um, other than that, I really want to say that's it. 
my truck was this is another thing that you will run into if your trucks like mine my truck was a clutch fan setup uh actually never mind <laughs> anyway i had to trim the shroud you trim the shroud you tr i had to trim the fan blades it takes some time because i have a k and air filter and it was hitting up on the air filter elbow here uh it's kind of got a flat spot on it now like i said i trimmed the blades trimmed the shroud still was cooling the truck perfectly fine um i sure the cfms might have been down a little bit but the truck never had an issue now i have uh an electric fan on here uh with a thermostat uh so that is a part of a part of the process too is that fan shroud basically it sticks out to about here you gotta trim all that bad boy out like i said one by one now it's gonna take some time or you can just switch to clutch fans that's really the easiest way not clutch fans electric fans one it's a cleaner setup two it's just easier uh all the time you'll take trimming those fans especially like i'm pretty sure this little plastic i got right here is pretty thin so um you don't want to have a vacuum leak there or you know sucking in dirty air or whatever the case may be hot air um so that's the other thing to this is basically i figured it out and it makes sense this manifold the snout of it sits further up the truck manifold it stops like where the engine starts so your throttle body sits back of course this sits back more uh, so it doesn't push into i mean a lot of this that stuff wasn't made for this setup um so i was learning as i go that's what i'm explaining it to you guys i get a lot of people that ask <clears throat> the biggest thing that i want you guys to remember is assembly of this setup um get your assembly get the injectors and fuel rails on um like i said you might as well throw this cap on because you're probably going to deadhead your system i've even seen guys who are running big horsepower setups even on the holly high rims because you got to think their positioning this particular positioning is the same on all the engines holly high rims i've seen guys think they can make that turn and you can't they had to deadhead it here so that's pretty much a general rule of thumb if you're going to put keep this alternator here unless there's some fitting i don't know about and a lot of other people don't know about that'll make that turn that 180 back uh, a 90 definitely won't work. It's going to have to be a very, very small 180, but then you don't want to choke your full fuel either, especially if you're making horsepower. So you got to think about that as well. Uh, but I will say if you can make that turn, you don't have to run that fuel regulator because it'll run in one fuel rail, come out the other and go back to the return. So if, like I said, if you can make that turn, you won't have to do the fuel regulator setup. Uh, the good thing about the fuel regulator setup is i mean i can monitor my fuel pressure from here uh we dial it in with the regulator up there um with the nut and regulating screw whatever you want to call it um so that's that uh i could go into more detail about what everything is on the truck but this video is literally just about this manifold so i mean i don't really i will tell you okay all right Whew. had to get out the cold I will tell you, uh, it's a good setup. Um, I didn't have the setup on the truck before I did the camera head, so I don't really have an apples to apples comparison of how good the performance of that intake is. Uh, I'm gonna run that intake probably all the way to the point where the six liter goes in. Um, even with boost, that intake will still go along. I've kind of thought to myself, well, maybe I'll put a Holly high ram on it. It'll look cooler, but what's the point of spending the money? I might only if me and my dad get a project where i want to put that holly or the sniper or the summit manifold or that sheet metal manifold if i want to put that on something else then i might just say okay i'll take that one off and put the holly sniper or the holly high ram on uh, but it'll most likely go on this six liter that's pretty much it um you can get them from directly from summit like I told you, it's exactly the same as a Holly Sniper ES5, EFI. It's made by Holly. It's the same. Save yourself. It's like $120 difference. Save yourself the money. If you really want them bossing on the top of the manifold for $120, bucks, be my guest. But you can do like I did, just buy the fuel rails. Really, the best combo, and I wish I could have made it work, was the Holly Sniper EFI throttle body, the Holly Sniper fuel rails, and that intake manifold. 
it is what it is. I mean, like I said, if you want to spend the money where you could buy a nice air motor fuel regulator like I got, uh, use that money to do that, that would make more sense. Uh, but that's what it is. The titles of this video might say they're two at one or whatever the case may be, but that's what it is. Hopefully you like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Super Stan. Stan1LE on Instagram. Follow me. Help me. Subscribe. Go to that video. Like I told you, if you have any more questions, I have a lot of stuff going on with this truck. Not only do I watch the, the truck uh, playlist I have, see what you might want to do but as well let me know what you have questions of i don't know everything about this truck but i do know a lot so even if you have a question about something that i haven't done in particular in particular please i mean feel free to ask um we'll have a discussion about it but i appreciate you guys for watching i guess that's about it everybody have a dope day